So we need to evaluate sine inverse of cosine of 7 pi over 6. So let's first of all find out where 7 pi over 6 is. It's right here. So it's a little bigger than pi. We know the value of cosine 7 pi over 6. So first thing we're going to do is deal with that. Now I just want to warn you, this problem looks very similar to a problem uh, to this problem here, but the main difference is where is the inverse? In this one, the inverse is on the inside and you have to draw a triangle here. The problem we're working on now, the inverse is on the outside and they have a very different way to, uh, to simplify these or evaluate them. All right, so cosine seven pi over six, Cosine is an x value, so we're grabbing that one right there. So we have negative square root 3 over 2. All right, I'm going to switch colors now because we need to think in a slightly different way. Now, you might be thinking, oh, well, shouldn't it just be this angle right here? Well, no for two reasons. Sine inverse, the range of sine inverse... is negative pi over two to positive pi over two. So we have to, our answer has to be between negative pi over two and positive pi over two. All right, the second reason it's not is because we want to know what angle has a sine value of negative square root three over two. So we've done this many times before. I'm gonna let theta equal sine inverse negative square root three over two. Now, if you already know the answer to this, that's fine. You can probably stop the video now. Uh, but if you don't, no problem. We're going to move the sine function over. So sine theta equals negative square root 3 over 2. All right, I'm going to look back at the unit circle. I want to know what angle has a sine value of negative square root 3 over 2. Remember, sine is a y value. So I'm looking in the y coordinates here. So there should be two coordinates on the unit circle, two y coordinates that are negative square root three, uh-oh. No, oh, no, we're okay. I was looking at that little mess up right there, but it's fine. All right, so these are the two angles that have the right sine value. I'm not gonna use the one in quadrant three because it's not in the right quadrant. I'm gonna use the one in quadrant four. However, I can't call the angle five pi over three. So five pi over three is not an okay name for this angle. Remember, our angle needs to be between negative pi over two and positive pi over two. So let's instead think about going the negative direction here. So instead of this bottom being three pi over two, this is actually negative pi over two if we use negative angles. And instead of this five pi over three, we're gonna call this this angle here would be the same as that angle, just negative. And so that is pi over three right there. So sine pi over three equals negative square root three over two. It's also true that sine pi over three, I'll write all these down. Sine pi over three is negative square root three over two. You could also write down the sine four pi over three also equals negative square root three over two. However, only one of these angles is where it needs to be. And that is, I forgot to write negative. That's the negative pi over three. So that is our theta. So theta equals negative pi over three. And somewhere up here, we're ready to make that substitution inverse. Actually, I think we're done because, yeah, this is what we started with. It's equal to this, and we just said that sine inverse square root 3 over 2 is negative pi over 3. And that hopefully will be what we see right there, negative pi over 3.